In this series, we're going to learn about how to read and write SQL statements, and we'll also consider the broader idea of databases, where they come from, and why they're useful. We'll be using MySQL in this tutorial, and while many of the commands will be common amongst most SQL implementations, some implementations do differ in how they treat different commands. In Oracle databases like 12c, you have commands to save output of a command directly to a file, called spool. But this command is missing from MySQL, because MySQL databases are normally used differently than Oracle 12c databases, so that command wouldn't be very useful anyway. I'll try to cover all of the commonly used commands, as well as those specific to MySQL in this series. But if you're using a different database than MySQL, just be aware that these commands may not work for you. So just to set the scene, before computers, paper files and filing cabinets were commonly used to store data. These had several disadvantages with them though. Most significantly were the fact that they were costly, they took up a lot of space, they were slow to access because it meant walking to a specific file searching for a specific record, but most importantly they were prone to corruption in the form of dropping files accidentally, in which case all of the contents of that file would be out of order. With computers becoming mainstream, individual files on computers were used to store data held in different folders. Things like spreadsheets and Word documents were used and still are to some extent to store data. While these are more accessible than paper-based filing in terms of space and cost, they can still be very slow to access, especially if you have a lot of data that you're searching through, because you have to access each file individually. Then someone had the idea to store all of the data in one place, which could then be queried to find specific records or data, which were called hierarchical databases. While these addressed the concerns of individual files, it did also add overheads in the forms of additional time being needed to actually format the data into a consistent format, and it also required time to decide what data is actually needed. During these early stages, data and the code of the database itself was all stored in one big file. In order to manipulate the data, you needed to know the entire process of how the data was stored, how to access it, how to manipulate it, just in order to retrieve a single record. It wasn't uncommon for someone to have to write a hundred lines of code just to see the data that was inside one of these databases. Eventually, a turning point was reached, whereby database architects realised that the data should be the focus of a database, not the code itself and so all of the codes required to operate the database was moved behind the scenes into what could be essentially considered as an interpreter, and a new simple language was introduced, Structured Query Language, or SQL, or more commonly referred to as SQL. This was accompanied by a move from hierarchical based databases to relational databases, and this lowered the barrier of entry for many users and coupled with the new relational architecture, helped usage grow immeasurably. With the introduction of SQL, users no longer needed to know how the data was manipulated, they just input the instructions which are interpreted by the database management system, and the results are sent back to them. This extra step does have some negative consequences though. Users do give up some control over how the data is stored to the database management system, and there is also additional latency as commands are interpreted before being processed, which is why in some very rare circumstances, other architectures are used. As time went on, different architectures were tried and tested. For example, when programming languages evolved and started to become object-oriented, so too did some databases. But people soon realised that relational databases had significant advantages over object-oriented ones. There were some good parts to object-oriented databases though, and rather than ignore them, relational databases incorporated them into what is now referred to as object-relational databases.
Most modern databases are now either relational or object relational in design. We will be looking specifically at a relational database in these lessons, but the SQL that we will be looking at is largely identical across the different types of database. Because most modern databases use SQL as the main interaction language, learning how to use SQL is a very valuable skill, especially if you're working with large data sets as part of your job or you will be in the future.